Apple's head is so strong, Android is in a state of panic. Don't worry, Qualcomm has already taken the challenge. The fifth generation Snapdragon 8 Extreme Edition has made a stunning debut. Let's first listen to the name. Snapdragon 8 has been listed. Do you think it's extreme enough? TSMC's 3 nanometer N3P process technology, Qualcomm's top level self-developed Orient CPU architecture, two 4.6 gigahertz super cores. What does that mean? The highest clock speed ever on a mobile platform. It also has six 3.62 gigahertz performance cores and a 24 megahertz ultra low latency cache. Browsing the web, watching short videos, playing games, etc., is no problem at all. More importantly, this time Qualcomm uses a GPU with a maximum of 1.2 gigahertz. Its slicing architecture is simply modular, separating each layer into an independent entity. This reduces the coupling and internal friction between different functions, making it more flexible and efficient. And in terms of AI, Hexagon, the NPU, and Sensor Hub work together in two ways. Whether it is a large language model or a personal AI assistant, it can respond and execute faster and consume less power. This time, CURD is like this. I think it is more complete than the previous engineering machine. The 6.73 inch M1 screen has a refresh rate of 120 hertz and a battery capacity of 4,357 milliamp hours. The configuration of 24 plus one terabyte UFS 4.1. I have also listed the settings before the test here for your convenience to evaluate the results later. Let's cut to the chase and start the benchmark. I emphasize here that because this is a KRD engineering prototype, the overall chip tuning and heat dissipation design are definitely different from those of the mass-produced machine, so all the test data in this issue is just for reference. If you want to argue, let's wait for the mass-produced machine. Let's take a look at Entertainment Rabbit's 4.47 million points. Friends, this score is quite top-notch and a huge improvement compared to the previous generation. Let's take a look at Geekbench 6 for CPU performance. The score of Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is 3,831 in single core and 12,371 in multi -core. What do you think? Is it amazing? Then there is GFX for GPU performance. Bench 1080p resolution, Walker's rendering score is 406 frames per second. At 1440p resolution, Walker's rendering score is 156 frames per second. We have also tested several other tests, such as 3D Mark. I have listed the specific scores here. If you are interested, you can pause and take a look. In general, it is very strong, giving me a feeling of squeezing toothpaste to burst. I just don't know if the game can be so strong when it is actually running. Let's test it right away. The image settings of the King of Glory game with the lowest load are very high and extreme. The test content is a 15 minute replay of the game watched by a master. The result is not surprising at all. The average frame rate is 120.41. The average FPS power consumption is only 3.1 watts. And the temperature is also very low with only 33.5 degrees on the back. This is really not a challenge at all. Next, I chose the extremely high rendering accuracy for Genshin Impact and then transferred it to the location of the wave boat anchor point below the Fontan Ilia Forest area for sprint rowing. The river here is quite narrow in some places, and it takes several turns to get through. After 30 minutes, the average frame rate at 864p rendering resolution is 60.11. There are four in total, but they are very slight and almost imperceptible. The temperature has risen a little, with the highest on the back being 38.4 degrees. The power consumption performance is also good. The four tongue and five inputs are 4.48. After running these two, I was actually relieved. If such a powerful SOC can't even easily handle Honor of Kings and Genshin Impact, then, then this Extreme Edition would really be unworthy of its name. But just like you, I want to see where its limits are, so we have to push it further. Let's try Honkai, Star Rail, and Ming Tide. Let's look at Ming Tide first. Rendering accuracy is also set to ultra high. Auto cropping is off and everything else is maxed out. For the route, this time we chose to teleport to the central plateau, Taoyuan Township, select Kakaro, and then run for 30 minutes. When the results came out, to be honest, I was a bit disappointed. The data was almost identical to Genshin Impact. 860p resolution, 59.45 FPS average frame rate, temperature didn't exceed 39 degrees, and power consumption was even lower, not even reaching 4 watts. Is this for real? Ming Tide, Qualcomm's power efficiency control, I'd give it a 90 out of 100. Any more, and I'd worry they'd get cocky. It seems that if we really want to squeeze out its limits, we'll have to rely on Star Rail. But then again, if even Star Rail... It can run at full capacity, that's true. Niu Xingti. We ran the familiar golden hour with the resolution set to very high, then teleported to the entrance of the Pino Connie Golden Hour Daydream Hotel. 
Select Jeopard and sprint around Golden Hour Square in a loop for 30 minutes. Guess what? At 972p gaming resolution, it achieved an average frame rate of 59.4 FPS with only one serious bug throughout. This is incredible. It feels like this year everyone is going all out for a fierce showdown. This is so interesting. I can't wait to see the showdown between the mass-produced machines. If you want to see it too, please leave a one in the comment section. We'll publish a separate flagship machine performance comparison later. Actually, if you look closely at the data, Xing Ti can still measure something, because the QRD cooling system is definitely not as complete as the mass-produced machines. Under heavy load, the performance priority is higher, which is more obvious, and the power consumption is greater. You can see the temperature on the back has reached 45.9 degrees Celsius, and the power consumption has reached 7 watts. I feel that this is the real strength of the Snapdragon 810Z5. I think that with this result, mobile phone manufacturers can rest assured to adjust it. Even if it is a little radical, it doesn't matter. So I am still looking forward to its performance in other aspects besides performance on mass-produced machines. In general, although it is still QRD, I think it is already quite amazing. The foundation is very solid and the plasticity is very strong. The Android camp can put their hearts at ease this time and study the performance scheduling and oil adjustment strategies carefully to strive for a more eye-catching answer on the mass-produced machine. I will also reveal to you the first mobile phone equipped with Snapdragon. We've already finished testing the mass-produced phone with the Snapdragon 8105, and the video will be online soon. If you're interested in Snapdragon's most powerful chip this year, don't forget to follow YLive. I'm Bogey. See you next time.